Hey, how's it going? It's Lee Halliday, and what we're going to cover today is the user reducer hook that comes with React. What we've got being rendered right now is some data. So it's the first 10 elements um, that we've loaded from some data source. And what we want to do is add a button to the bottom to load more. So this will grab sort of the next 10 records, and we'll keep showing that load more button until we've loaded all the data that there is. So if we go into our React app, it's a pretty simple app so far. It's just a small component. And what it does is it loads some data into state. And where it's coming from isn't a server in this case. We're sort of just, we have some dummy data set up, which is an array of 25 elements. It sort of, it counts up from one to 25. And what we're doing is we're slicing that data. So we're grabbing the elements from zero to 10. So we're grabbing the first 10 elements from this array and we're throwing it into some state here and then we're coming down into our list and we're simply mapping that out which is why we are seeing the first 10 elements on the screen here. So the next step is that we want to add a button that will say load more and eventually when we click that button it will go and it will fetch the next 10 the next 10 until we've loaded all of the data um, from our data source and we're showing it all on the screen. And to do this, we need to keep track of a number of different state properties. So the first one we need to keep track of is loading. So this is just, are we currently loading data from our fake data source? Because we may want to show a message loading data so that the user knows something's happening. And the next thing we want to keep track of is, is there any more data to load? Because in this case, we've only got 25 elements. So once we've loaded data a couple times, there won't be any more to load. So we want to have a Boolean to keep track of that. We want to have a Boolean, or not a Boolean, um, a variable to keep track of sort of where are we at in terms of loading data. So this is basically if we start at zero, the next time we're loading data, we don't want to start at zero again. We want to start sort of after the end, up until where we've loaded this far. So after would basically become 10, and it would load from 10 uh, to 20, and then after would become 20, and it would load from 20 to sort of wherever we can load. And then we obviously have our data itself, um, which right now is just in state. So we've got four things to keep track of, and this is the perfect sort of place to use a reducer rather than keeping track of this state individually. Because when the user clicks the button, sometimes we're going to have to update three or four of these all at the same time. So instead of calling use these different set state functions, we can just instead dispatch an event that we're loading data and the reducer that we're going to build will keep track of managing all of these different state properties. So why don't we start with our reducer? So here we've got if I could spell const, okay. So the use reducer hook that comes with React, it takes two things. The first thing is the reducer itself. So this is a function that gets called every time an event is dispatched. And it has a goal of basically taking the old state along with the event that occurred and creating a new version of the state, the next state. And then the next, um, argument here will be the initial state that we want to have. So why don't we start filling out this? We know we're going to have loading and let's say that at the beginning it's just false. We're going to have more. Let's say at the beginning we're going to assume that there is more to load. We will have our data itself which why don't we just start it as an empty array. And then we've got our after sort of what's the the furthest we've gotten in terms of loading data so far. Typically, this would be like the, the last ID from the data you've loaded. So the next time you make the request, say like, get me the next 10 after this ID. Uh, so we'll start this at zero. Okay, so what does this function return that we can uh, destructure and grab uh, the values out of? It gives you two things. It gives you the state. So this is the current state of the world, our data. And it gives you a function that you can call called dispatch. And dispatch allows you to basically dispatch an event to the reducer so that it produces a new version of the state. 
So instead of doing it all in line because it will get sort of messy down here, why don't we create a reducer function here instead? So we'll say reducer like that. Okay, so what does this reducer function look like? Reducer receives two things. It receives the current state, and then it also receives um, an, an action, an event that occurred. And within this action is sort of all the data you need to produce the new version of the state. So there's different actions that can occur. So typically we build a switch statement in here that will switch on the action.type. So this is the particular event that occurred. And then we build a number of case statements in this switch to handle all of the different types that we can see. So why don't we say that in this, we're gonna have two, sort of when the user clicks the loading button, it will start loading so that the user can see the, that it's loading. And then it, there'll be another event that occurs once the data has been loaded. And we'll call that the loaded event, in which case we do have data uh, to update into our state. So here we'll, we'll call this start, and we'll have some code in here. We'll have another one that is loaded, and we'll have some code here. And then we've got a default scenario of basically what occurs if uh, the reducer receives an action that we don't know how to handle. And we can just throw a new error. Like basically don't understand action like that. Okay, it's complaining here because it wants either a break or a return, uh, but we'll fix that. Okay, actually, let's just, uh, we'll put in some breaks so it's happy. There we go, no more complaining. Okay, so why don't we just um, get the start one working first? And to do that, let's actually trigger it. So if we come down here, we'll go and we'll add our load more button. So in this LI, we will have a button, which will listen for an on click event. And it will say load more like that. And just so we can make it look a bit different, let's add a background of green to that. Okay, so when on click occurs, what do we want to do? So we'll have a function here. And inside of this function, we will dispatch some events or some actions to be handled by our reducer. So the first event that we're going to dispatch will be type of start. Okay? So when the user clicks this button, it will dispatch the start event. So if we come up here, this code here will handle what happens with start. So the way these, each of these switch statements typically looks is that you're going to return the new state. That's the goal of a reducer. It's to take the old state, the new action, and generate the new state. And what I like to do is basically take a copy of the state and then add on the new attributes that we want to change. So in this case, we want to change loading to true. So now we don't need this break because the return gets us out of this um, function anyways, so everything's happy. Okay, so when the user clicks the load more button, it will dispatch the start event. That will be handled by the reducer, which will return the new version of the state that now has loading set to true. So why don't we come in here and start to use this new data that we're not getting from there, but we're grabbing from our state variable here. So we'll say loading and our current data, that's what we're using so far. And we'll take that from our state. So data is good, we're already mapping it out. Why don't we add a new list item that will say loading when loading is true. So we'll do that with, um, because we know it's a Boolean, we can use a shortcut and we can say, if it's loading, basically if that's true, return this. 
So why don't we come in here, when we, when we click this, we now see this awesome loading tile show up. Cool. So while things are loading, maybe we don't wanna show this green load more. So we wanna hide it when things are loading. So we will say when not loading, show the load more. So now we come here, we click load more, it swaps out for the loading tile, and now we have to deal with actually going and loading the additional data. So what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna dispatch another event when the data has been loaded, but first we need to go and grab the new data. So why don't we create a variable called new data, and what it's going to do is go to our all data, that big array um, of data that was generated up here. And it is going to slice off the new data that we want to um, append to our data array. So we want to slice essentially from where we got to last time and then however many we want to load. So our per page is 10. So before we were just starting it at zero, but we want to use this after variable now so that as we load data, this is changing and we don't start at zero, we start at 10 or 20 or 30 or whatever. So we need to extract after so that we can use it. And then we want to grab per page, so we want to grab the next 10. So that will get us our new data. And then what are we going to do with this new data? Well, what we can do is we can dispatch another event to the producer. And this will have a type of loaded, like that. And you can pass other pieces of data along with this action. So we can actually just pass the new data, like that. So our reducer will be receiving loaded and also the new data that we've grabbed from our data source here. So if we come up, we need to handle this use case right here. So when it's loaded, we typically want to take a copy of the state and then we want to update all the different properties that have changed. So in this case, we've got loading, which will no longer be true, it's going to be false. We've got our data. So what will our data look like? It will be the previous data and then we will append the action.new data to this data property. So now data will contain the old stuff plus the new stuff. So we also need to keep track of, is there any more data to load? Um, so if this were coming back from a server, it, the server might tell you sort of in the data whether there's any more or what page you're on, what's the next page, all that stuff. But in our situation, what we can do is basically look at if the number of elements that are in new data is equal to 10. Let's just assume that that means uh, there's probably more data to get. So if we say new data dot length is equal to per page. So if there's 10 and 10, let's assume there's more to go fetch. And we also need to update our after variable. So what we can do is we can take the previous after variable, so state.after, so that would be zero at the beginning, and then we'll go tell it to, um, we could do per page or we could do the length of however much we grab. So let's just do that one. So that would mean it would start at 10 um, after it loads the first time. Okay. So let's come back here, we click load more, and we grab the first 10 elements. We click it again, Oop, and it breaks somehow. So let's see what's happening. Okay, some troubleshooting. After, da, 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 da. okay, I don't know, so let's see. Let's look at our state and our action to see what we're receiving. So the first time we do it, um, 
it gets called with our initial state, like that, uh, with the type of start. Then it receives, uh, gets called another time when we dispatch loaded. So loaded has the type of loaded plus this. And we don't have here, maybe better we can do is let's actually just look at our state every time. So we load more. So loading is false. It's saying that there's more. We're gonna, we've got the 10. The next time we do it, we wanna start at 10. So if I trigger this again, okay, so here we're not grabbing any elements. So let's try to figure out why that is the case. Is after not right? After should be 10. And then per page is 10. Oh, I know. What the heck? Well, I'm in the dark, that's cool. So we want to go, I think it's because I used slice wrong. Uh, it's start and end. So what we want to do is we would want to do our after plus per page like that. Sorry about all of that debugging. So we come back here, we load our first 10, then we load our next 10, and then the last time we load the five, but load more is doing nothing now because there's no more data to load. So here's where, how, where we need to use our um, more Boolean of whether we want to show the load more button or not. So when do we want to show the load more button? We want to show it when it's not loading and there's more to load. More like that. So we come in here, we load 10, next 10, five, and then there shouldn't be any more to load. Cool. So that's it, let's review it. So we used use reducer because we had to keep track of sort of nested state where we're updating four properties. And these properties are updated sort of all at the same time in a lot of cases. Um, when we load data, we want to not only update whether it's loading to false, update our data, also whether there's more to load after that, and sort of the starting ID of where to load data after. And so this was a perfect use case for a reducer. So we set up our reducer using the use reducer hook, which receives the reducer function, whose purpose is to receive the old state, the action that was dispatched, and based on that action, generate the next state. We gave it the initial, and then here we're just, um, we're pulling off the individual values from our state here so that we can use them as we're rendering things out. So we used loading to display a loading message here. And then we also used loading along with whether there's more to load to determine whether to show this load more button. So on click, we dispatched one event to start loading data. Then we grabbed our data, and once we had it, we dispatched another event. So you can imagine here, it might be asynchronous. So let's use set timeout to fake that out, and we'll have it run after a second. So we could actually put all of this here. So now we're dispatching, essentially waiting a second, and then dispatching another event. So we loading for one second, it loads, loading for one second, it loads, etc. Cool, so that's how you use Reducer. There's no longer really any need to use Redux. It comes built in with React in the use Reducer hook. Hope you learned something from this video. Take care, have a good day, bye.